Welcome to the instructional video on creating a golf ball in SOLIDWORKS. Uh, as you can see here on the screen, this is going to be our final product. Uh, this is going to be an exercise in creating different revolved extrusions, both uh, revolved ball space and revolved cuts. Uh, during the sketch phase, we're going to be working with uh, our standard sketch tools as well as convert entities and trim entities. Uh, during the uh, extrusion phase, uh, we're going to be using new tools, which includes reference geometry, where we're going to be creating axes using the three base planes that exist in SOLIDWORKS already. That would be front, top, and right. We're also going to be working with the circular pattern uh, feature, as well as the mirror feature, in order to complete the actual golf ball, as you see in front of us. Now let's go ahead and get started with our first revolved extrusion. All right, the first thing you're going to want to do is to go ahead and start SOLIDWORKS. From the home screen, we are going to go to Parts. In this particular part here, we're going to be doing our first extrusion, which is a hemisphere. Once we have the work zone pulled up, we're going to go down here to our measurement scale, and we are going to select MMGS. We're going to go to Front Plane, and we're going to open a sketch. Come up here to your tools and you're going to select center point arc. If it's not selected here, you're going to go to the drop down and select center point arc. First click is going to be at the origin. Drag out here to the X axis. Doesn't matter the length at this particular time for a radius. We'll fix that later. And we're going to draw a 90 degree arc. Now, if it bubbles the other direction, just continue to go in a circle until it finally does get you the arc that you're looking for. So we're going to go all the way from the x-axis to the y-axis. Click on here. So we have an arc, but we need to fill this in with some lines. From this point, I'm going to right-click, go to my sketch entities, and I can select line. I can also do the same thing by going up here. I'm going to go ahead and fill in these two lines for the y-axis and the x-axis. So I have a solid object. And click select to lock out up here. Okay, now that I've got my drawing, I'm going to go ahead and go to Smart Dimension. Click on the arc. We're going to use a regulation size golf ball. So in the metric system, the radius is 21.35 millimeters. Once I have that, it's time for our revolved extrusion. So I'm going to click out of my Smart Dimension and go to Features. Click Revolve Boss Base. Make sure it's blind at 360 degrees for our axis of revolution. We're going to use the Y axis. And there is our hemisphere. Go ahead and click the green checkbox. And that is half the golf ball that we require. Okay, now that we have our hemisphere for our golf ball, we're going to have to create a dimple pattern. Now there's a lot of different ways we can create dimple patterns and modern golf balls have very, very complex dimple patterns. Uh, the dimples are used to provide better aerodynamic stability for the ball in flight, as well as at a distance. If we use a smooth golf ball in golf, it doesn't go as far as one that has dimples. Um, up until about 30 or 40 years ago, no one really paid too much attention to the dimple pattern, how it reacted to the, the face of the club, the different wind directions, the spin rate and everything else. Uh, that's very well understood in today's uh, modern sports design. So they're able to come up with dimple patterns. They're able to eliminate a lot of the uh, accentuated problems with people's swings. Uh, but we're going to do a very simple dimple pattern. Uh, we're only going to do, we're only going to draw one dimple, but we're going to recreate it on several different planes. So let's go ahead and start with just the basic dimple. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to front plane again, and I'm going to hit the space bar. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and open the sketch. I'm going to hit the space bar and go to normal so that I have this view. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here. I'm going to select the drop down because I need to pull something out from this sketch. I'm going to right, I'm going to left click on sketch and I'm going to go ahead and hit the eyeball so that I can see the actual sketch in gray. I've got the line here, the line here, and then of course the arc. I want the arc. So I'm going to select the arc. So it should be light blue. Come up here to convert entities. When I click convert entities, it's going to pull that arc from the first sketch into the second sketch. 
I'm going to go ahead and go back to my sketch number one, left click again. Of course, you can right click. It will just give you some extra uh, options other than these three. Go ahead and hit hide. And now I have an arc that's already created for this particular uh, circumference. I'm going to create the dimple up here. So I'm going to zoom in. Start off with a basic line. Go to the point and drag down a line to about, about one millimeter. Right click. I'm going, to, I'm going to go to switch to arc. And when I do, it's going to give me this arc, but it's going to give me a bubble arc. I don't want that. So I'm going to mouse back over here to my point. And then when I get close to the point or touch it, it will give me this shape of arc, which is exactly what I want. Come over here and I'm going to click that. So it connects. Right click and hit select to shut the tool off. I only need this bit of the arc. The rest of this stuff can go. So I'm going to go ahead and go up here to trim entities. Make sure I have trim to closest. Come over here and I'm going to click that and it's gone. So I just need just this part. Click out of trim entities. Go to smart dimension. The length of this line is going to be one millimeter. Now the length from this line to this point right here is going to be two millimeters. I'm going to click out of smart dimension, go to features. We're going to go to revolved cut. Blind at 360 degrees. And I want this vertical axis right here. I'll go ahead and turn this to the side so you can see the preview. And when I click the check, when I click the uh, OK button, otherwise known as the green check button, I now have a dimple. It's from this single dimple that all the other dimples are going to be created. Anywhere from 180 to 230 dimples are going to be on this golf ball when I'm finished. Okay, so let's see how we're going to do that. Okay, at this point, in terms of creating sketches and doing extrusions, we are actually finished. However, we're not finished with having the number of dimples that we need. Uh, when this golf ball is finished, we should have somewhere between 193 and 225 dimples. Uh, but we're not going to have to draw all those individual dimples. We're going to use this one here on a couple of different features to be able to repeat everything that we did, but get the computer to do it instead of us having to do it by hand. We could do it by hand, but it would take a tremendous amount of uh, effort. Also keep in mind that the dimple pattern that we are coming up with is not really a pattern that we would use actually on the golf course. It is a very simple pattern used in the mid 20th century, and it's going to actually accentuate flaws in the average golfer's swing, causing the ball to go off course pretty radically in some cases. Um, modern golf ball designers have figured out what patterns of different shaped and different sized dimples actually work to lessen those effects when it comes to the average golfer. Okay, as a review in the features tab, remember the first section right here has to do with adding material in different ways. The second section has to do with cutting material in different ways. Uh, you can't do the cuts until you have the uh, extrusions over here. The third section is modifying anything that's on the extrusions. And then this is just some extra stuff that we can be using. Now, one of the features we're going to be using is underneath here called circular patterns, which is right here. Circular pattern depends on the presence of an axis. Uh, we don't have any axes right here that we can utilize easily for what we're trying to do. And what we are trying to do is we're going to copy this dimple on an arc at every 15 degrees all the way down to 90 degrees down here. That's one way we're going to use circular patterns. The other way is we're going to take that pattern once we get here and create a ring all the way around. Pardon me about that. So let's go ahead and use reference geometry and we're going to create two new axes. So we're going to go ahead and click reference geometry. We're going to click axis. It's asking for a couple of entities so it can create an axis. So I'm going to use my design tree, click the drop down. I'm going to click my front plane first because I need a horizontal axis. I need that axis right there. I'm also going to go ahead and click the top plane. And that's the axis that's trying to create. I need that one. So I'm going to go ahead and click the OK button. I also need the vertical axis so I can spin these uh, dimples around in a circle. I'll go ahead and go back to reference geometry and click axis again. 
Let me go back to my front plane. I don't want that one. That's the one I want. So there's the vertical axis that I need. Go ahead and click that. That gives me axis one and axis two. And that's how you create axes in SOLIDWORKS using reference geometry. Now I could create axis number three, which is this one right here, but it's not needed at this time. Okay, now that we've created our two axes, we're going to use them in combination with circular patterns in order to create our dimple pattern and have this repeated. Uh, the first one I'm going to use, I'm going to use axis one for this first exercise. Um, so I'm going to go and click on axis one. You can either click it here or you can click it over here. That's the first thing I want to do every time I do this. I'm going to come up here and we'll select circular pattern. A lot of stuff going on over here. A lot of stuff. The first one right here is our reference axis. Uh, the reason I clicked axis one first before I select this is that this automatically fills. Um, we're going to go ahead and make sure we have equal spacing. And I'm going to go ahead and select 15 degrees. Enter button. I'm going to change to two. This is always going to be two for this first part. Now this part right here is looking for a feature that it wants to repeat. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and come over here and we'll select the cut and right here and click it. As you can see, right now, it's created a second dimple right here based on the radius that we have from this point all the way down to the origin. So kind of think of this as a fan. We're going to continue this arc all the way down every 15 degrees. So for the next few minutes, this is going to be highly repetitive. So this is our circular pattern number one. Once I've got that, I'm going to go ahead and click the OK button. And there's our second dimple. I'm going to go ahead and click on axis number one again. Come over here to circular pattern again. Change this to 30 degrees. Come over here. For this area, again, I'm going to select the cut revolve. And click the OK. I'm going to click axis number one again. Back to circular pattern. Yep, this is going to get repetitive. Every 15 degrees, all the way to 90. Yourself, that's a lot of uh, circular patterns. <laughs> We're just getting started. I'll try and speed this up a little bit. Yeah, it's going to be 60. Oh, axis number one. Circular pattern. You can go ahead and click circular pattern, but then you actually have to select axis number one uh, up in here. And one more. Okay. Let me go ahead and just click the circular pattern without clicking the axis and show you how this works. So as you can see right now, it's looking for something. So right here, I'd actually click axis number one. I'm going to go ahead and change that to 90 degrees. And it's already selected circular pattern five, but that's not the right one. I want cut revolve. So I'm gonna come over here and right click and clear selections and hit cut revolve. So now I'm at 90 degrees. And thinking, wait a minute, it's cutting off half the circle. That's not a problem. It will still cut it. But when we go ahead and make this a, an actual sphere later on, the mirror image will complete the dimple. Uh, we also are going to 3D print this um, so when we put the two hemispheres together, it'll still match. So that is how we use circular patterns to get our first row of dimples created on the golf ball. The next one will be creating our circular patterns. Okay, now that we have taken our original dimple, we've copied it in the north-south direction. Now what we're going to do is we're going to spin them east-west around axis number two. So we're going to start off by clicking axis number two. You either do it here or we can do it over from the list. We're going to select, guess what? Yep, circular pattern. We're going to make some changes. The first change we're going to make is right here at 90 degrees. We're going to change 90 to 360. I'll go ahead and select my feature that I'm going to copy, which in this case is no longer cut revolve one. It's going to be circular pattern number one. 
As you can see, it's already starting one on the other side, but I'm going to need more than two. I'm going to bump this one up to six, maybe seven. Six or seven would be fine. We're trying to get these as close as we can without crossing over these two lines. If they cross over, the extruded cut has an issue. So I'm going to pick seven. I'm going to repeat this entire pattern all the way down. So I'm going to go ahead and go to axis number two. Circular pattern. Circular pattern number two. I'm going to increase it. Nope, not there. <laughs> increase it to 12, 13, 14. I'm going to try 14, see how that works. Looks good. Axis number two. Circular pattern. Again, you can go right to circular pattern without selecting the axis, but you have to select it here anyway. Um, I'm going to go ahead and select number three. And I'm going to bump it up. Eh, 21 is quite a few, but that'll, that'll work. We'll do 21. Go to circular pattern just to show you that I can do this without selecting the axis. I just have to come over here. Highlight the box, axis two, highlight this box, and I want the circular pattern that goes along with this circle right there, which is number four. Let me increase this a few more. 24 is a good number to work with. Axis number two, circular pattern. Again, I'm gonna go to number five. Bump it a few more. The number here is not that important. Is I mean, I got 27. And just make sure, like I said, that you do not cross over the yellow lines on the dimples. And axis number two again for the last of our circular pattern. I'll select number six. Now I'm trying to squeak in 29. Okay, and that finishes off creating a repeating nipple pattern just with one little sketch. Keep in mind, it started with just that. That little bitty sketch right there and then the one dimple. We we're able to repeat that pattern. On to the next thing. Okay, now that we've got all of our dimples completely placed in this hemisphere, we need to finish off the golf ball. So we're going to do two things in this part. We're going to go ahead and create a southern hemisphere. We're also going to add a fillet to all the dimples. So let's do the whole hemisphere copy thing first. Now, first thing I really want to get to is I really don't need to see the axes anymore. Axis one and two. So I'm going to, use, I'm going to go ahead and make those disappear. Um, I'm going to go ahead and left click on axis one and hide it. I can also right click. And right click adds all of this stuff here. So now they are no longer visible. Rotate the golf ball where you can get to this flat plane. I'm going to go ahead and mouse over and pick the top plane because I have to select a mirror. So that's my mirror. Go up here and I'm going to hit the mirror feature. Mirror is a lot like sketch mirror except that uh, it's for 3D objects. I want to go ahead and make sure we click bodies to mirror. You don't want features, you want bodies. I'm going to click in here, and I'm going to click right here on this flat surface that makes up this uh, northern hemisphere. And when I click it, it completely copies it on the other side. And you can see right here on the equator, where we had just half a dimple, it is now complete. So let's go ahead and do one last thing. We're going to go to fill it. And we're going to go ahead and change fill it. We'll try one millimeter first. And I'm going to go ahead and click on, don't click on an individual dimple, click on the entire, you know, mouse over to the face and click the entire thing and we'll see if it does it. May have to make it smaller. And we'll go ahead and click the check button, see how it looks. And looks just fine. It does kind of look a little odd with all these clearly uh, marked edges. So what we're going to do, we can go to, just to make a quick little change, we can go to View, Display, and down here to Tangent Edges Removed. 
and that looks like a golf ball. Come up here and change to plain white. Now it really looks like a golf ball. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and save this as a SOLIDWORKS parts file. Call it golf ball. I'm going to use my period one thumb drive if it will show up. And there it is. Period one, we'll create a new folder. Number might be different, but it's going to be called golf ball. And save that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create an STL file for golf ball. And this is going to get emailed to me. I was going to email the, uh, yes. So go ahead and email me the STL file for completion. Okay. So now you have the golf ball all complete and you've emailed me the STL file and that's it, right? No, that's kind of boring. What we want to do is that we want to go ahead and do a complete uh, 3D print of the golf ball. You're thinking, okay, we just go ahead and go to flash for or flash print. We go ahead and set up some supports. No, uh, that's way too much support. Way too many things can go wrong with this. So what we are going to do is we're going to modify this file. We're going to resave it as a sub file and set up flash print right here all in one shot. So first thing we're going to do is make sure we click the save button save what we have here i'm going to get out of some of this stuff here i'm going to keep playing white but i'm going to go ahead and go back to display and go back down here and show tangent edges visible i'm going to come down here and i'm going to go ahead and get rid of fillet just delete it i can i'm going to bring that back later don't worry about it mirror i'm going to get rid of mirror okay well why do you want to get rid of mirror I just want the hemisphere. I want just like this. The reason why I want just like this is that uh, I'm going to actually print two of these, two hemispheres, and I'm going to glue them together so it prints like this, where this is against the, the 3D printer platform, and it prints this top. The problem is trying to line this thing up can be a bit of a burden. So what we are going to do is we're going to add some guide holes here on the bottom for some guide rods that we're going to make out of barbecue skewers so that we can put this together and not have any issues lining this stuff up. So we're going to go ahead and click this face and we're going to open a sketch. Go to normal. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with center line and I'm going to create an X and Y axis. I hit select by accident. I should have hit broke uh, and break the break the chain. Okay, here we go. I'm going to create a circle right here, and I'm going to mirror it over here. So circle. We're going to do an extruded cut. Now the diameter is going to be 5 millimeters. We know that as a matter of history, the actual hole that's produced will be smaller. It'll be somewhere around 4 to 4.1 millimeters. The barbecue skewers have a diameter of about 4.2 to 4.3 millimeters. Thinking, well, wait a minute, the barbecue skewer is going to be bigger. Not by much, and they are collapsible, aka flexible. So we'll be able to put them in this hole, and they'll be a little bit tight. Uh, we're going to use a set of uh, quick grips, quick grip clamps in the classroom to get them to go in there, but that'll make the fit a whole lot better. We'll add super glue on this area and then clamp them together. Uh, let them set for a little bit. So now that I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and set a distance from here. Let's go 10 millimeters. Okay, I'm going to hit Smart Dimension, get out of that. I'm going to go to Mirror Entities, copy the circle. <clears throat> Excuse me. Right over here. Just like that. I'm going to go ahead and go to Extruded cut. 
The uh, barbecue skewer pieces are roughly 20 millimeters long, so I want to compensate for a little bit of extra material. So I'm going to go ahead and go 12 millimeters deep. Click that. I'm going to add a one millimeter chamfer to the cylinder itself at 45 degrees. Over here, hit the side of the circle. So that gives me a little bit of extra space up in there. Plus it gives me a nice feeder uh, entry for the skewer that direction. I want to do both of them. So that's the result. Now let's go back to fill it. We still got the one millimeter. Going to go face. And there is our finished golf ball hemisphere. File, save as, same folder, but I'm going to rename the full, I'm going to rename the file, golf ball half, H-A-L-F, L-F, I know I can't spell. I'm going to resave it as an STL file. I am not I don't want this one at all. I just want the full golf ball. So STL, golf ball half, and save. Yes, and okay. Okay, that's that. I'm gonna go ahead and drop in the SD card to my converter. Wait for it to pop up. I have to drag it over here. Okay, something that's not been happening a lot. Uh, people have not been emptying out these SD cards. B206 G code needs to be completely empty except for yours. I'm going to delete everything that's on here. I'm also getting a lot of people that are saving STL files to this. Uh, yeah, stop doing that. Okay, I'm going to open up flash print. I'm going to load. Go find our golf ball half. And yes, okay, now obviously we have a problem. This has to be rotated to where it's face down. 90 degrees, we're just gonna go through here and use this process of elimination. Oh, I got it right the first time. And we're gonna go to move on platform. So we have blue. Oh, we need supports. No, we don't need supports. Don't worry about supports. Like, well, I need to load a second one. No, you don't. You just come up here to edit and duplicate. There it is. Now I'm gonna go ahead and move these a little bit closer to the front, a little easier to get out. Now we could go ahead and set up our G code like this. We only want about between three and five millimeters apart. We could set up our G code like this and have everything printed and that's nice. However, if for some reason we're a little bit closer than we need to be with the print head, uh, this is gonna be very difficult to get apart, to get off the platform and we can actually damage these little corners. So we're going to add a raft. So we're going to go ahead and go PLA, PLA. We're going to go to right extruder on the raft. Shells, 343, three, and fill at 20%. Use hexagon speed, print speed 80 and 120. That's, those, are good, uh, those are good speeds to go with. Temperature at 205 for the right extruder and 60 for the bottom. That looks good. Save configurations. Click OK. Let it do its thing. And this is also something that has been occurring. Make sure you export the G code. I've done this a few times myself. And find the B206 SD card. B206 SD card, thank you. And click the save button. All right, once you do that, do this real quick. Go ahead and open up File Explorer again. So I got another folder here on the computer open up. Go back to B206G code just to make sure that it's there. All right, go ahead and place that on the uh, 3D printer of your choice. Um, on the name tag, go ahead and indicate which color that you want. If it's not in one of the printers uh, already, uh, we will certainly make that change. So no matter what color that you want. And then we'll take care of the assembly in class. That is it.